is important that we understand our own roots, where our cuisine came from in America, in order to make it better. So we're here because we know that within a thousand mile radius, all of the foods we hold dear were discovered with the New World. We're here to discover the flavors of the past from you so we can bring them to the modern kitchen. That is cocoa. This one is still green. When it ripens, it will get yellow, a kind of rusty yellow. This is buchada. This is a sheep stomach filled with blood and liver. And these are uh, the acerola cherries. And inside, as you can see, it's yellowish. Just one glass of this, twice the amount of your daily requirement of vitamin C. You buy a hand of dried shrimp, that means this. And sometimes they sell them this by kilo. But usually, we buy them by hand. The ingredients for the feijoada is smoked pork feet, smoked pork, ribs, Tails, everything from pork, different sausages, steak shares, and uh, smoked veal rib. Acarajé is a typical Bahia snack. It's the most popular Bahia snack. Uh, Acarajé is made of a spoonful of skinless dried beans paste, deep fried in palm oil. Uh, then you split down the center and you put inside vatapá and salad. Salad, uh, green tomatoes, onions, and coriander. And you put inside dried shrimps. Vatapá is a paste made of dried shrimps, bread soaked in coconut milk, and peanuts, and then the palm oil. Then you cook until to get the desired consistency. And uh, the acarajé is uh, sold in, on the streets uh, and on the beaches on Sundays. Coming to Brazil, I've looked to see what I can take back to the workplace and I think I've hit gold with uh, this type of cuisine. Here, as you can see, we work with three levels. In the lowest, where you get the most heat, we start preparing the meats. On the second, it continues. And the top one is ready for the dining room. Uh, the food has the many blends and flavors, and, and it utilizes a lot of the, the different cuts uh, that are underutilized. In, in the United States, you know, uh, with the rotisserie chicken being the hottest thing uh, that is coming out, I think this is the uh, next level that we can take. Here we have a fixed price. It's about $10 per person. And you have a cold buffet and you have a hot buffet. You get uh, between 18 and 20 different kinds of meat, grilled meats which are taken to the table. Of the beef, there are five different type cuts. Lamb, hair, a chicken heart, a chicken breast, chicken legs, the sun-dried meat, pork, pork, three different types of pork meat, the sausages, 15 different kinds of salads, eight different side dishes, rice, uh, fried potatoes, that kind of thing. I definitely think this concept and style of restaurant uh, would work uh, anywhere in the States for that matter. What we ate here tonight was great, was well prepared and very tasty. It's so practical um, in America, I think it would be very successful if, if you owned a place like this in America. Um, you basically need uh, maybe two prep cooks and uh, one guy on the rotisserie. Thank you! The typical Bayan breakfast is uh, basically uh, composed of um, 
tapioca cake, uh, corn cake, uh, carimã cake, uh, cuscuz of tapioca, uh, uh, banana da terra, which is a kind of banana cooked and boiled on Friday with cinnamon, and uh, also uh, inhame is a kind of root, uh, manioc co uh, cooked or boiled, and um, uh, typical seasonal fruits, tropical fruits, and tropical juices. And uh, basically, we use the coconut milk to do it, and corn, uh, corn flour, and uh, also the grated fresh coconut. This is uh, corn couscous. It's made of grated coconut, corn flour, and coconut milk. This is uh, pamonha. This is typical from here in the month of June. You parboil the whole husks uh, of the air of the corn. You, you make a, a paste with corn, uh, with uh, corn flour and coconut milk, grated coconut, and you wrap in their husks. And so you boil and you serve hot. They like their food extremely sweet, not only in their desserts, but their Danish items. Um, the breakfast cookery, so they enjoy the sweetness. They say that it gives them extra energy. We're possibly getting affiliated with a company down here that we can work with to get different ingredients out of them, to have us work with them, so we can show what you can do with the exotic tropical fruits that are here in the uh, South Americas. If you cross the, the state of Bahia, in the north direction, you see close to rivers, the most important rivers. You see houses like the families living like in small house, like 10, 15 people living in a small house made of uh, earth and, uh, and that's all, nothing more else. And they, they work uh, in the country and they, they get some food they can have and they don't have uh, education, they don't have um, health care normally, and they live by themselves. But this city, Wawa, where these people from the restaurant came from, is still like that. It's a very, very dry city. They don't have much water. Uh, in spite of the fact that uh, we have one of our biggest rivers very close to this place, Wawa, they don't have much water, and they cook with uh, wood. And this is called uh, pilão, this, this uh, instrument is called pilão, it's the, from the time of the slavery. And what she is uh, doing here is uh, dry, dry beef with uh, manioca flavor. Dry beef and manioca flavor. And then it gets drier and drier till the time it's ready to be eaten. It's not very traditional in Brazil to have men cooking. Oh no? Yeah, the most traditional is that women stay at home cooking and taking care of the family and men were outside working out and paying our expenses. Here uh, this is um, sarapatel. That's a very very special dish from the slavery time. At the time of the slavery they didn't have uh, the best parts of the of the town so the best ones were for the owners and they have the stomach, the stomach, liver and blood and they created this dish. So it's all parts that the owner didn't want. They cut it and they cook with uh, garlic and onion and tomato and a special sauce with the blood mixed. It's very, very special and very strong. This is buchada. This is a sheep stomach filled with blood and liver and cooked with oil and onions and garlic. And this is also sheep, just, uh, they cook and they bake it. This is mashed manioc. We make, manioc is very, very traditional in Brazil. We love manioc. So we make a lot of dishes. This is mashed manioc made with manioc, salt, uh, and butter, and that's all. And here is uh, what we call pirão de leite. Pirão de leite, this is milk, manioc fla flavor, salt, and kind of butter, that's all. And they mix it together. It's like a mash, but made with, made with milk. This is a kind of salt meat. They, they take the beef, and after that, they put salt and leave it under the sun. When it's completely dried, they take it and they, they fry in oil, with onion. It's very, very good. These little balls are um, what we call manioc cake. 
It is made of manioc and uh, cheese, and uh, they, they put uh, some kind of uh, spices, green spices, and afterwards they fry in oil. We call it uh, manioc cake. This is beiju. It's also made of manioc. It's dry manioc. This, this is a very special beans we have here in the north of Brazil. It is called the feijão de corda. They cook together beans and rice. When it's, it's cooked, they mix with some kind of cheese, sheep cheese. You only have this kind of dish in the north of Brazil. In all desserts, we just cook fruits with sugar, and in some of them we put uh, cinnamon, and some others we put cloves. This green one are lemons just cook it with sugar and, and some uh, cinnamon. This is jaca fruit. It, come from, it comes from Asia, and we have it a lot in Brazil. This is a siriguela fruit. It's also a typical fruit from the north of Brazil. It comes from Amazonas. And this is a sweet milk. It is cooked with uh, eggs and uh, kind of lemon, some gloves and uh, milk. One outstanding feature of the meals that we, we have had is the, the, the lack of vegetables, uh, per se, more with, more with starches or carbohydrates, a lot of rice and uh, black-eyed peas and black-eyed pea preparations where they, where they haul the, the peas and they, they mash those and make paste. And those are then in turn deep fried in the palm oil, giving them a very bright orange color. And those are all served with condiments. Um, but again, all the tubers uh, that we've seen, the plantains and the different types of sweet potatoes versus um, other vegetables we might see in the United States, like carrots and artichokes, we just don't see those here. I was surprised to see the cacao was actually a fruit uh, prior to becoming the cocoa or, or the chocolate. It was a very delicious fruit, very sweet um, in flavor, and very white and flesh. It, it was uh, avocado shaped and it had a, a great number of pods inside when you broke it up very, with a very white flesh on the outside with the hard seed on the inside and you would, you would eat the pulp on the outside. Some of those preparations could be used in, in our contemporary cuisine in sorbets and sauces and purees. I think we can take the ingredients that we've seen, the fruits, the starches, the different meat items, different seafoods, and just, just uh, incorporate those into our style and our team philosophy. Um, we can utilize those in the way that we prepare our food because they have the same applications um, in American cuisine. they call it mandioca. This pepper is called malagueta. It's small but it's very hot. This here is okra, which we use a lot here in Brazil. This is like um, parsley, but it's not really parsley. It's called coentro. They use this a lot for uh, seafood. Now this vegetable here, which is called cow's tongue, is used by the people instead of spinach. Pinha, it's a typical fruit of the tropics. It's white inside and, it's, and it has a lot of seeds, but it's very sweet. This meat is sun-dried. This meat is not the same meat that you put in the feijoada. The one that you put in the feijoada is this one here. That is dried. This is the mandioc flour. Guava and cheese, they call this Romeo and Juliet. This is called the rose mango. This is called the spade mango because it's a thin mango. And this is, it's, it's a broken heart mango. It's, it's one of the best mangoes. We have crayfish. Yes, yes. It's not really lobsters, but they're very good. With the fresh water shrimp, lobster, stingray, and shrimp, they have the same sauce as the light manioc sauce. This here is called Gini Papu. With this one, we make a liqueur. You prepare, start preparing a year in advance. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah.